Hi friends, welcome back. So in this particular video, we, we are going to cover the uniqueness characteristic of a timing arc. So let's get started. So what is uniqueness? So the uniqueness actually defines how the output of a cell changes for a different type of transitions on the input. So in simple words, whenever there is a rising transition happening or a falling transition happening at the input of a cell, then how the output is going to change. So this relationship is basically called as uniqueness. So there are three types of uniqueness, positive uniqueness, negative uniqueness and non-unit. So positive uniqueness is nothing but whenever there is a rising input transition happening at a cell input, then if the cell output is also transitioning too high or the output at the output also there is a rising transition happening or whenever there is a falling transition is happening at the input of a cell then if the output of the cell is also transitioning low so in another words if there is a rising transition at input and at the output is also there is a rising transition or whenever there is a falling transition at the input and the output is also falling then this relationship is called nothing but a positive unit. The example is buffer, AND gate and OR gate. We will see in the details by taking examples of some of the cells in our next slides. Negative uniqueness is actually whenever the transitioning at input and outputs are happening opposite. For example, if there is a rising transition at, in, at input and there is a falling transition at output, then or vice versa, if there is a rising at input and falling at output, th this kind of relationship is called nothing but a negative unit. Example is inverter and NAND. So the third type of unitness is non-unit, where there is no exact relationship exists between input and output. Okay, now let's take some examples of some of the cells and let's try to understand. So the first examples I have taken here is of buffer. So in buffer, what happens whenever there is a, if there is a rising transition happening at input, the output will also rise. And whenever there is a falling transition at input, the output will also fall. And remember that this is a buffer. There is only one input and one output. So we have only one timing arc. Okay. So the uniqueness characteristic of this timing arc is nothing but a positive unit. Now see how the uniqueness is defined in, in the timing library. So this is a snippet of the buffer timing library. So if you see here, we have the pin X input pin, pin Y, which is output pin. And you see here in the timing category that the timing sense of this path, X to Y path is nothing but. So here if you see the pin Y, this is output pin and related pin is X. So this is output pin, this is input pin. So this timing arc is nothing but between input x and output y. So what is the uniqueness characteristic of this timing arc is positive unit. So this is how uniqueness is defined in a timing library. Now let's take an example of AND gate. So in AND gate there are two timing arcs A to Y and B to Y. So now let's see whenever there is a transition happening at input B then how the output will transition. Okay. Now let's see that there is a rising transition happening at B. So whenever there is a rising transition happens at B and we will assume that first at input A is 0. So if input A is 0 and there is a rising transition at, transition at B, the Y will be 0 only or there is no change. It is a constant value. Now if A is 1 and there is a transition for B, a rising transition, then the output will also rise. So here the output will exactly follow B. Now let's see what happens whenever there is a rising transition happening at input A. So whenever there is a rising transition happening at input A, we will assume two values of B. First it is 0. So when B is 0 and there is a rising transition at A, the output, there is no change in the output. But whenever B is 1 and input transitions happens from 0 to 1, the output will also rise. So here the output will exactly follow A. So what we can conclude here is whenever there is a rising transition happens at input at each input of the AND gate, the output will either be a constant value or it will rise. Now let's see what happens when there is a 
falling transition happens at inputs. So whenever there is a falling transition happens, so here again we will first see the falling transition happening at input B. So when there is a falling transition at input B and A is constant 0, the Y will be 0 or there is no change. Whenever there is a falling transition at B and input A is high, the output Y will also transition transition to low. So at both input and output there is a falling transition. The same story for the A input where it also transition from high to low. Whenever there is a falling transition and B is either 0 or 1. So whenever B is 0 there is no change. Whenever B is 1 and the input transitions from high to low, the output will also transition from high to low and the output exactly follows the A. So what we can conclude from here is whenever there is a falling transition happens at input of A AND gate, the output will either fall or it will be a constant. So here we can say that rising input results in rising output and falling input results in falling out. So this is an example of positive. Now let's see the next example of an inverter. So in inverter what happens is whenever there is a rising at transition happens at input of the inverter the output will fall and whenever there is a falling edge transition happen, happens at input of a inverter the output will rise. So here there is opposite transition happenings always. So whenever there is a opposite transition happens it is called nothing but a negative unit. Now let's see an example of auxiliary. So here concentrate properly. So what happens is whenever there is a so here first we will take the example of rising edge. So we will see that there is a rising edge happenings either at input A or input B. So first take example of input B. So whenever there is a rising edge transition happens at input B. So we will take two values of A, fixed values values of A. So whenever there is a rising edge at B and input A is zero, output Y will also rise. And whenever there is a rising transition happens at input A with input A is 1, the output will fall or the output follows B with an inverted edge. So here what we see is there is a rising transition, hap transition happening at input B but the output can be either rising or falling. Okay. So next what we see is whenever there is a rising transition happens at a with a fixed value of B then the output will also either it will be rising or it will be falling. But for the same rising edge transition at A which is not resulting in the same transition at output. Okay. Now let's see, let's see how it behaves during the falling edge transition. So during the falling edge what happens is whenever there is a falling edge at B and input is constant 0 the output will be also falling and it will follow B but we know there is a rising transition at input A and A input B and A is 1 the output will rise so again for a rising edge transition at input B sorry for a falling edge transition at input B the output will either rise or fall but it, it will not only rise or only fall so here again we cannot define a proper relationship between input and output. So whenever there is a this kind of relationship between input and output, what we call that timing arc is a known unit. So hope this is clear. Yes, I have a question for you. Please find out the uniqueness of a NOR gate and write down in the comment section. So this actually concludes here on the uniqueness. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. Also, if you like the video, please hit the like button and please do subscribe this channel so that you will not get miss such video in the future. Thank you.